So, how would Lemmy play that, man? How would Lemmy do it? How would Lemmy do it? You gotta crank that thing through at least four Marshall full yeah. stacks. Yeah. He he just hammered the shit out of chords. That's what he'd do. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen the man with an upright. <gasps> In a way, there's like, I feel like there's nothing sillier yet more emotional than that sound of flat wounds on a fretless neck. was the first Fender bass amp, pretty much, wasn't it? The basement? Oh, uh, the, yeah, the, ba the basement was, you know, what's funny is, like, I've known of a lot more guitar players to play through basements. I uh, It's kind of weird, like, I've never really gotten too much into exactly the rigs that a lot of bass players have used. I mean, yeah. based all out of my knowledge of that, I would just what I've, what people have played in bands that I've been in, you know, and uh, like I started off with a, a little all solid state GK head that same thing Jacob Johnson played in the Molly McGuire's. It always sounded good, so I got it, and, and it was great. And then later on, I got into just tube amps, you know, and it was like, oh well. This one has, you know, a tube preamp in it, so I'll have that tube sound. And, and somebody said, no, no, you need to, you need to really check out what's up with the all tube amp, you know. And, uh, hey, Don. <laughs> and the first, uh, the first all tube uh, bass amp I had, had, I still have it. it is this Trainer YBA 200. And uh, it's I think of all of the uh, of all the amps I've owned, all the bass amps I've owned. It's it does what I want the best. Threw in some KT88. Good. Sweet. Well, that's the Jaguar. It's kind of the same one that you use. Yours is in the studio right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this is the Japanese. Under Jaguar bass, they also have a, a Chinese one, and they have a Squire Jaguar bass. Um, <coughs> mine's black, and actually, I, it's got all sorts of stuff. Like this is a switch to go to the active circuitry, and uh, I pretty quickly realized that, especially if you're going to use like any kind of fuzz effects, like a lot of the one, a lot of the fuzz effects I like really don't like active circuitry, so uh, I had a friend build me a, a little fuzz circuit, and that's Tom Dalton at fuzzhugger.com, or fuzzhugger effect. He built me just the circuit and sent it to me, and I had my buddy, Sean Darby, uh, I took my bass to his house, I bought some Samarium Cobalt, Cobalt noiseless pickups, which are just passive pickups, and we swapped them out took out all the active circuitry and made controls for the fuzz pedal up here and, and so you know whenever I'm playing live it you know I just, but when I kick in the fuzz it just boom so you were saying on this one about the bridge yeah this this is the standard bridge that, that came on this bass and it's fine but I uh, uh, on mine part of the surgery I put a badass bridge on there Let's go find one. That's what they're called. Yeah, let's look at a badass. Yeah, 
Come. Yeah, um, there we go. There's one right there on the jazz bass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, get it. Yeah. So. Yeah, the badass bass, too. Badass bass, too. Yeah, that's what I want on mine eventually. Yeah, I recommend it. Like, smoother feeling, and there's. It's just a more heavy duty bass plate. Everything on there is. Get more resonance to the body. Yeah, it's real, real solid and a whole lot of contact area. You know. So you like Getty Lee? Man. Yeah, I like Getty Lee. I mean, the dude can play. Um, it's not really my style of music I listen to all the time, but you can't, like, as a bass player, watch Getty Lee play and and think he sucks at the bass. Yeah. So awesome. who, who are your biggest influences? So you're wearing Motorhead? Nah, I'm wearing Motorhead. I and mean, Lemmy, I think that kind of shines through when anybody sees me playing. Uh, um, Les Claypool. Not that I really do much like him. He just, you know, when I was 11 years old, I found out that he was making those noises with a bass guitar. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I want a bass at some point, you know. Uh... Strangely, Nikki Six from Motley Crue, like who I've rarely heard him play any like like fancy bass lines, but what he does is just like important, you know. What I mean, it's like I always thought of them as an old '50s style band, just heavier hair metal '50s, like, like pretty much. Yeah, I mean, they covered Jailhouse Rock, you know. Yeah, he, uh, he they kind of kept to that same dun 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 dun, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bass just holds it down, which is. Yeah, oh, man, there's there's so many things like the advantages of playing bass, you know, like, like why did I want to play bass? Like in a way, like initially it was like so I could have an easier instrument to sing over. But as time went by, like I started hearing, paying more attention to the bass and the bands that I listened to, and started trying to in recordings have my bass audible so I could make sure I was playing it right and sometimes I was just proud of a bass line I did or something. You realize that uh, that it, it really does bass really does kinda not every song. In fact not any song on Injustice for All, but a lot of songs it, the the bass guitar really just drives the whole thing. It's it's the boat in the water, you know, with the with the Vikings in it. So speaking of Metallica, there. The, how about the Cliff Burton? Go, oh, yeah, Cliff Burton. In fact, I've I've done a couple of you know, absolute Cliff Burton ripoff bass lines. I mean, absolute genius. Like, you know, I I still get bummed out on you know the day he died, you know, and everything every year. And <clears throat> but yeah, in fact. I've told people over and over again that Master of Puppets is the the most listenable album beginning to end with the highest replay value that I've ever found. And you know, several several people will instantly agree with me and sometimes I'll offer up another one of their own, but that perfect album, Cliff Burton's such an awesome bass player it was anyway. I know as soon as this conversation's done, when the interview's done, I'm going to think of a billion other bass players. Tom Neiman from uh, Leica and the Cosmonauts. The dude's crazy. Something cool about a guy who just plays with the strap over his right shoulder. Big, crazy Finnish dude. Uh, you know, Bob Bogle from The Ventures. You know, God rest his soul. And Mel Taylor would play the drums on his flowy and you know, classic stuff and, and there are several ways you can play guitar there's like you know a hybrid of picking and finger picking and there's of course finger picking and there's flat picking and there's all these things but to me like to me since the the bass strings are so heavy and they like they bounce so hard and everything I feel like there, there are more ways to play a bass than there are to play a guitar the four strings aren't a limitation. It almost opens up new horizons. 
Oh yeah, you kind of got to get more clever with it, you know. Like, I don't know, maybe maybe it's an equal opportunity kind of thing, you know. Like, I don't know. I, I pick up a six-string bass. I don't know what to do with it. Like, you know, I like I like the four strings. It's it's just got to, you know. I mean, the size of my hand it just. It, I mean, this is up on the shelf and everything, but we'll grab on. Let's play. All right. Yeah. You ever sustained an injury from a base? <laughs> uh, well, I've been shocked. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, just recently I was writing a song and it's had about a week to heal up, but I just straight wore through my finger. Like it, it had a hole in my finger at the end. Of was it worth it? Oh yeah, <laughs> got the song halfway written. You know? <laughs> Like, and that's it's just a bass line like this. I'm starting to mess kind of with chords though, like, you know, that I'm usually a one note at a time kind of dude, but, you know. So how does the process come to you? Well, I just got to sit down with the bass and just start hitting notes. And, uh... Actually, like I picked up a bass and plugged it into this amp, and just had Motorhead on the brain, so I started doing this. Uh, how it goes? Like a. And you know, and started. You know, it's probably pissing everybody else off in the store or the store. It sounded a lot better when I played it yesterday, but it had a lot of walks and stuff, and I was like, and then I, I thought, oh, I'm going to remember all of that, and, <clears throat> you know, I had to go digging in the brain, but, you know, I think that's something fun, and if the band doesn't like it, I'll just keep it on tap for something else, but, uh, but yeah, everything is really just, you know, I play something I like by myself, and then it you know, sometimes I'll play something at band practice and everyone will say, oh, that's cool, and I'll just jump in. And, uh, the, I don't know, the writing process changes every time I write anything, you know. But most of the time, most of the time, I, I was messing around at home, played something I liked, brought it to the band room, you know. A lot of times I'll be playing guitar and then I'll, you know, I'll show it to the guys in the band and they're like, well, that sounds like a wicked bass line, so do that on the bass line. All right. Yeah. <laughs> About what percentage of y'all songs is written predominantly on the bass to begin with? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, probably about the percentage of songs that that I sing, and there's there's been a couple that Drew sings that I started writing the music for on the bass. You know, I try to. I just try to imagine that when when I'm doing my bass line, at some point that's all that somebody's gonna hear. So I try to do a do a, do something interesting, I mean, even if it's just the 
like the one I'm working on right now with this guy, like, just bounces on the E over and over again forever, like, like, you know, I mean, I've already, as I was coming up with the bass line, I was already coming up with lyrics and vocal harmonies and <clears throat> ideas for the guitars to fill space and, you know, and I bring it up to the guys and of course I'm the deal. Pretty much entirely everybody writes their own parts and everything. And so I just try to, you know, lay down as much of a foundation as I can and hope that, the, that those guys have some interesting ideas for the building on top, you know, cool balconies and, you know, burglar bars, whatever. But, uh... Sweet. Thank <laughs> you.